Hello all, and welcome to day four of Advent of Elixir. Today's Advent of Elixir is motivated by looking at some of the Elixir talks. We should all be familiar with the Enum module. The Enum module is the utility module that lets you work with data that implements the enumerable protocol. And remember, protocols are a way of assigning multiple dis dispatch to terms. They're modules that implement a bunch of functions that, depending on what type it gets passed in the first position, will fork, impl fork the implementation over to specialized modules that are designed to work with that type. So, generally speaking, this is how the enum module can act not only on lists, but other list-like things like maps, streams, map sets, and so on. Each of the enum module functions relies on enumerable to find what implementation to run based on the type of data that you pass it. So let's look at the enumerable docs. Um, here are the set of functions that uh, it asks to be implemented. So one is called count. Another is called member, another is called reduce, and another is called slice. So where's map? Normally we think of the fundamental enum module functions are map and reduce. So one could imagine that reduce and map are the basis functions for the enumerable module. But in fact, we only see of those two functions reduce. Moreover, if we read the, if we read the documentation for these other three functions more carefully, they all say it should return, okay, count if you can count the number of elements in your numeral without traversing it. Otherwise, it should return error module and a default algorithm built on top of reduce that runs in linear time will be used. Member likewise says, Otherwise, it should return error module and a default algorithm built on top of reduce that runs in linear time will be used. And slice also says, otherwise, it should return error module and a default algorithm built on top of reduce that runs in linear time will be used. So, all three of these functions that it asks to be implemented can themselves be written in terms of reduce. So, it looks like Reduce is, in fact, the core function that you need in order to implement any of the enum module functions. So, as sort of an exercise, uh, today what I want to do is I want to implement map from reduce. So, I've gone ahead and prepared a module here. As you can see, the way I've written this module is to have a single function map, which is going to take a list and a lambda. And what we're going to do is we're going to hopefully apply that lambda to each item on the list and use enum.reduce to get there. Enum.reduce itself is going to call this map from reduce function, which we're going to pass the two uh, uh, arguments from the reduce and also the lambda itself, and that is going to result in the um, in a map that hopefully will look like enum.map. So let's get running. First, let's decide what function we want to run. For simplicity, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make function just be the add one function. Let's test that this works. So if I pass one, it's gonna give me two. If I pass 47, it's gonna give me 48. And let's also test that this lambda works on enum.map. We get two, three, four. That's exactly what we expect. However, if I do advent.map, I'm gonna get something different. And so, you know, that just means that we have to actually implement advent.map. The first thing I'd like to do is to figure out what this init should look like. 
Um, currently, it's given this not correct value, but we haven't seen that yet. And the way we can get it is by passing advent.map the empty list. And you can see that we're going to get the not correct atom. Conversely, if we do enum.map with the empty list, we're going to get the empty list. So it stands to reason that instead, we should put empty list for the init value. Let's recompile. And let's do advent.map. And now we get the correct answer. Great. However, what happens if we do one, two, three, like before? We still get unimplemented. And in fact, this will also happen if we do one. Um, so let's go ahead and implement map from reduce. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unblock these so that we can see what they are. So item, accumulator, and fun. What I'm going to do is I'm going to inspect all of these so that we can watch what the values are as they come through. Let's recompile again and then run advent.map1. And we can see item is 1, accumulator is the empty list, and fun is uh, the lambda that we passed, the plus 1 function. What happens if we do 1, 2, 3? We see 1, the empty list, and that. 2, unimplemented, which is the previous result from map from reduce, and then the lambda, and then 3, and unimplemented. So it sounds a reason that maybe a good solution for this would be to take the accumulator, which is the empty list, right? So for this, what we would expect is a list of, of two. And how are we going to get two? So two is the result of taking the item, applying function to it, and then, uh, and then appending it to the end of whatever the accumulator was. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to say, accumulator plus plus fun dot item and let's recompile and let's go ahead and run that we get two which is exactly what we expect and then if we do one two three we also get what we expect for enum and then if we do advent then we get two, three, four, and it's done exactly what we expect. One gets augmented and uh, put inside, uh, put right after this empty list. Then that shows up here, which is the list of two. Two gets augmented, turned into three. We get two, three here. The three gets augmented, turned into four, and then that's re returned as the final result. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these three. So we can recompile and see that it's pretty straightforward that this is doing what we expect. There is, however, one optimization we want to do. This is extremely inefficient because in order to do a plus plus operation, it has to go through the entire list, reverse it, and then put it on put it on the end of the uh, on the end of the other list, and then reverse the whole uh, and then reverse the whole thing. It would be cool if instead we could do something like this, which is an atomic operation. Remember adding an item to the front of a list is more efficient than adding to the back of the list. So we compile and see what happens when we get this. However, when we run this function, what we see is that all of the items are in reverse. So what we're actually going to have to do is this. Let's recompile this again, and then run this, and now we get the correct answer. So this is how you implement enum.map from enum.reverse, or from enum.reduce. Uh, enum 
And what I would challenge you to do is to pick a few of the functions that exist in the enum module, or perhaps even uh, a few of the functions that the documentation for enumerable claims that there is a there is an there is a default algorithm for, and go ahead and implement themselves them yourself, and see if you can't figure out how those things are done under the hood. And that's all I've got for today. I will see you tomorrow.